In the case of holistic assessments, assessments of competencies, and more diffuse skills where knowledge, skills, and attitudes are integrated, a qualitative analysis yields much more useful results than a quantitative or psychometric analysis using statistics. The following slides will take you through the 12 quality criteria of Bartman's CAP model. The Wheel of Competency Assessment was developed in order to assess a competency assessment program, CAP. This means an entire set of assessments that measure whether a student has achieved a competency, which is a larger learning unit. When evaluating these larger units, different assessment methods are generally integrated to create a solid picture of whether a student has achieved a competency. Where one assessment may be lacking quality in a criterion, another might compensate for it, so that the entire set of assessments will still provide a good foundation for deciding whether a student has achieved the goal. This endeavor is generally undertaken as a team in a step-by-step -step process. However, you can assess the quality of your particular test and where you find quality is lacking, you may either improve the assessment or check whether this outcome is tested elsewhere in the program in a more qualitative way. For example, you may want to use traditional written exams or even multiple choice exams to test foundation knowledge, but then test the same or similar outcomes again in the project. In short, not all assessment methods included in a CAP must meet all quality criteria, but the program as a whole should. Fitness for purpose is at the center of the wheel and forms a basis for the development of all assessments. Fitness for purpose is comparable to the idea of constructive alignment, which prescribes that all assessments must be aligned with the outcomes of the learning process and with the instruction given. The first, inside layer in the cap wheel, are the more basic quality criteria, which are commonly used for the evaluation of all kinds of exams and are probably known to you. The criteria are represented in layers or circles to represent the idea that they are interrelated. In the wheel, the criteria for the inner layer tend to be prerequisite for the criteria in the outer layer. For example, a cap cannot be fair, layer two, without being comparable and reproducible, and it must be transparent before it can be perceived as meaningful. Comparability. The conditions under which the assessment is carried out should be, as much as possible, the same for all learners. The concept of reproducibility of decisions approaches the concept of reliability. It relates to whether the decisions made are accurate and constant over time and assessors. This does not mean that an assessment must be objective in the traditional sense of the word. In this case, it is seen as the agreement between people assessing something. You can have highly subjective forms of assessment, which can be quite reliable. Transparency. Learners should know the scoring criteria, who the assessors are, and what the purpose of the assessment is. A possible indication of the transparency of the assessment is to check whether learners can judge themselves and other learners as accurately as assessors. Layer two, the outer layer, contains criteria that are more embedded in the culture of assessing integrated skills, knowledge, and attitudes. This does not mean that they cannot be used to assess the more classic tests, because these too can contribute to the complex job of determining whether a learner has acquired a competency. If you are finding that quality criteria are not met here, you can ask yourself whether these outcomes or competencies are also tested elsewhere in a way that meets more quality criteria. Self-assessment. If students are able to assess themselves, looking at their own work through the eyes of an assessor, as it were, they will be able to regulate their own learning much more effectively and be less dependent on teachers. This should decrease student clue seeking and student anxiety. A tactic to promote self-assessment is to allow students to formulate their own learning goals or assessment criteria. The act of formulating these outcomes is a valuable learning outcome in itself, reducing students' time spent trying to make sense of a teacher's criteria. Fairness specifies that an assessment should not show bias to a certain group of learners. Possible causes of bias are improper adjustment to the educational level of learners or tasks containing cultural aspects that not all learners are familiar with. 
A possible way to increase meaningfulness is to involve learners in the development of the assessment process and to allow learners to perceive a link between the assessment task and personal interests. An assessment might also become more valuable to learners when they themselves can determine when they are ready to take the assessment and can thus gain the most profit from it. Cognitive complexity resembles authenticity in the sense that it also relates to the process applied to future professional life, but it focuses more directly on the fact that assessment tasks should also reflect the presence of higher cognitive skills. The use of performance assessments is no guarantee that higher cognitive skills are indeed being measured, so this should always be thoroughly investigated. The square around the wheel represents the broader educational space in which the assessment is taking place, and here you'll find two possibly conditional criteria, cost and efficiency and educational consequences. About cost and efficiency, assessments need to be correctly designed according to all criteria, but if they cannot be implemented and used because of prohibitively high cost or low efficiency, the development has been a waste of time. Educational consequences pertains to the effects a cap or an assessment has on learning and instruction, how teachers and learners view the goals of education and adjust their learning activities accordingly. This criterion is also related to the concept of washback. Washback, or so-called teaching to the test, can be considered a negative develop development in the case of classic tests that focus on isolated knowledge or skills. Washback, however, can be very positive when it comes to testing competencies that integrate knowledge, skills, and attitudes. The type of assessment students are asked to focus on will greatly influence the type of learning activities they undertake. 